Oh, no, I think that's everyone. Uh, so, I guess a bit, get the bearings. Inlet Works sort of sits in front of us here. The guys are working on the um, liquid waste receival at the minute off to my right. Uh, the, the unloading slab being the, the nice new concrete slab that's sitting there. So, what we haven't spoken about yet, uh, the solar farm is off to my left here, this lay down area. So once we finish with all the pipe work and get it out in the ground, uh, we're gonna put a 200 kilowatt hour solar farm uh, in here and that will provide the base load for the plant throughout the day. Uh, so essentially it'll be, while the sun's shining, it'll be able to run itself as long as there's not too heavy a load coming through. Is that sort of where we ended up with that? Um, and Chad's also asked me to mention, so SA Water have got, uh, was it 500 meter buffer, Chaz? Yeah, 500 meter buffer around this site. So the reason we've relocated from the existing treatment plant is everyone's built right up to the edges of it and now there's complaints, naturally. Uh, so 500 meters either way of this, there's a, uh, well, SA Water's bought all that land and won't be developed or boxed in. You can see there's a paddock fence, a stock fence just at the end of, uh, or just past the lagoons. So that's been rented back out to the bloke who uh, lives behind the treatment facility and he grazes his sheep right up to that fence, to keep the grass down and then everything inside that fence. The plan is to rehabilitate that with um, native veg to hook up this existing patch of remnant veg back to the, um, the other nature corridors that surround the plant. I think we've got two and a half hectares approximately of re-veg to do for the project so that should clear off the bulk of it. Um, there's a few native plants in the area that are protected. There's a resin wattle in particular that if you're driving down the driveway on the way out and you see one little shrub sort of boxed off in the middle of the road that's because it's federally protected and we couldn't get rid of it so the road sort of moves around that now but the idea being we'll plant a few more of them around the way as well as part of that reveg um, re program. So the I guess sort of what we're looking at the big concrete box is the MBBR. The guys are backfilling around that at the moment. Uh, the scaffold's still in there, so we've still got to do the mechanical fit out. The tank behind that is the clarifier. The crane's working on that today with the guys fitting off the internal walls. Uh, and behind that, the next thing you can see is the effluent storages. Uh, aside from that, services going in on the tank farm and the rest of the slabs for the mechanical plant and pump stations around the place. Any questions, I guess, now we're sort of looking at it, might have jogged a few. I don't know, is there anything uh, that people want to know more about or, um, you know, or any other questions? We've got Tim here um, with technical knowledge on the plant and, and Chaz as well from the, um, I suppose, the, his long-term involvement in the project and, and any other questions that, that people have. Did you What's not what stops the media blocking up the valves and the pumps? Is there a screen or something inside the tank? If they re re so inside the yeah. tank, um, there's aeration diffusers that sit on the floor of the tank. So there's a picture we showed this morning of yep. what that kind of looks like. Um, other than that, there's nothing inside the tank. So there's media retention screens uh, that keep the media contained in each of the zones. Um, the, uh, those aperture size of those screens are uh, eight millimeters, and the media is twelve. So physically, the media just, just can't get through. Uh, there's also air sparging on the beneath each of the screens. So periodically, the uh, those screen uh, the sparging blowers turn on and clean the screen, just keeping out the debris away from them. But other than that, that's what keeps them in the media and everything in the zones. So we can actually play with the ratios. Put more media in the front zone. Uh, less in the back to suit the actual uh, infrared conditions and then and effluent quality. Uh, Any other questions? Uh, I've got a question. Uh, <clears throat> so in relation to the sludge that's generated from the treatment plant, um, uh, how is it dealt with and yeah, yeah where does it go? Okay, um, it's around about 1.5 dry tonnes per day, this is that design uh, being produced from the process. Um, that'll come out of the base of the clarifying units. We'll go into two sludge holding tanks. Um, they're not 
defined as aerobic digesters because we don't need to reduce the volatile solids in the uh, in the sludge. Uh, and that just holds some re retaining capacity um, and because the screw presses will do a batch. So once they've got enough sludge stored in the tank, they'll then run to fill the storage silo. Once the storage silo is then uh, full, that'll then trigger the truck to come in to uh, pick up that material. Um, and then that'll move on to uh, Pete's composting operation, will it, will it get incorporated with other waste from the region and uh, green waste. Pete's, uh, they also generate um, gas and uh, use that to uh, generate power for their and heating for their uh, site. Any other questions, points of interest? Yeah, I've got one. <laughs> Point of interest. Um, you see just out to uh, the left here, about uh, 50, 60 metres, there's a post with a solar array on it and uh, a camera. That's a time-lapse camera. It takes a photo every 10 minutes. So I check up, up from my desk in, in town. It's put there by John Holland, but I can check from my desk what Simon's doing like uh, every, every 10 minutes. <laughs> I sometimes wonder what he does in the in the in between the ten minutes, but anyway, it's uh, it's going to be very handy for us to uh, edit that at the end of the uh, whole project and have uh, that transition from, of this from a, a paddock uh, to the uh, treatment plant that will look pretty s uh, swish at the end of the uh, the period, which is uh, as we say. A, April the uh, 28th, I think, Wes, is when you have to um, do the PC, uh, project completion, and we go into that operation and maintenance period where John Holland will be operating the site. Um, probably just... Just from uh, um, another point of view, maybe I didn't actually cover this in my presentation this morning. Um, because we're coming out via 10k pipeline, uh, this site also includes odour control. Uh, so again, based on a bi-trickling filter and activator carbon um, polishing step. Only because within a 10k pipeline, we're building up the dissolved sulphide levels. So we're producing a, a reasonable level of hydrogen sulphide that's coming out of uh, from liquid into gas form at the inlet works. So all the inlet works is all covered. Uh, same with liquid waste um, and also the, the, f the first section of the flow split zones up in the MBBR will also be covered and ducted across to the odour control plant. So um, despite being out in an open paddock and um, the uh, nearest receptor is many, many hundreds of metres away, 1.2k, um, there are more closer receptors which is actually the workers inside the plant and ventilation systems for buildings so uh, that's another reason why um, odour control and treatment is important at this site as well. Not that we have too many, not that we have too many workers on site, um, the, in the tender process uh, John Holland um, proposed that we, SA Water, we can operate this for, with one FTE. So that's one of, the, one of the parameters we'll be checking up in the performance proving period. Um, so I reckon it's probably best if we make our way back towards the bus and then jump on and then um, under words of guidance if we are able to do a loop around that'd be great and then we can uh, jump on the road back down to Adelaide.